The day after Donald Trump's inauguration, millions rallied together at women's marches. Among the crowds, pussy hats stood out, designed to protest Trump's comments about women. The hats have become the informal symbol of women's rights at marches and online. This form of campaigning is known as craftivism. Betsy Greer defined the term in 2003. And I wanted something that was an umbrella term to explain all sorts of different types of activism related to craft because there are different types and different viewpoints and I wanted something wider than just what I thought. The short definition states that craft plus activism equals craftivism. The Knitting and Stitching Show in London brings makers together from all around the world. Betsy is hosting a craftivism project at the event called You Are So Very Beautiful. It's making stitched affirmations because I realised that they were messages that I needed to hear and then I realised if I needed to hear them, other people needed to hear them. Sarah Corbett is founder of the Craftivist Collective, an organisation that supports makers to be as effective with their protesting as possible. She has been an activist for many years, but began to doubt the effects of conventional campaigning. Always well get reach as many people as possible and be as loud as possible so more people know to share. And for me, that just, I didn't come naturally. I'm a naturally quiet person. But I also immediately felt a bit of an injustice that if we want everyone to campaign for a better world and we're only offering online activism, which for some people isn't always the best thing to do um, and it can be very quick and transactional or we're offering extrovert offline action then how are we going to harness those introverts? Here at Uniglo, Sarah has organised a craft of this event. They are stitching patches of hope which have political intentions or empathetic messages. Women have been using crafts as a political voice throughout history. The suffragettes sewed banners to share their campaign messages. This embroidered banner has signatures of 80 suffragettes who were hunger striking in prison. The second wave feminist and women's liberation movements continued this practice. Third wave feminists yarn bombed using knitting and crochet to graffiti cities. Despite its history, Sarah thinks that craftivism still doesn't have respect as a form of protest. Craft is often seen as in the UK what older ladies do and quite twee and a certain type of person that does it and I think that's one of the strengths with craftivism is because it is gentle because people it reminds people in power of their grandmothers and their mums so it brings a warmth to activism that I think is really powerful and actually that lowbrow sort of lack of respect in some ways of craft can really help our activism. Further north in Hull, they're running the Revolutionary Makers Project. It seems to be that people are really up for doing something and this is a sort of quite a simple, inclusive and playful way that they can be part of the conversation. I think because women's rights uh, and human rights and equality are really at stake right now, it's, it's, it's in the consciousness and so also that really speaks to people. Uh, it's a really important time to use craft, you know, and, and take it kind of beyond the private and the domestic and into the public realm. In terms of uh, r racial diversity, I think there's still an issue with craft being quite for, you know, quite white and middle class and about, you know, uh, uh, beauty and about skill. And this hopefully turns things on its head. Craftivism has also been criticised for not being diverse enough. But Momtaz Begam Hussein sees craft as one of the most international practices to partake in. Craft is not something that's exclusive to the UK or to the US or anything like that. It is completely international, literally. You pick any country in the world and they will have their own cultural traditions and their own crafts, whether it's a type of stitching or a type of embroidery. There are craftivists actively trying to be more inclusive with their campaigning. Here at London City Hall, protesters are rallying for women's equality. One of the real criticisms of white middle class feminism is that it is really white and middle class and so I thought it was important to do, I've been going on a lot of marches and been really trying to be very active and very thoughtful and intentional with my feminism. I actually also have a, a black pussy hat 
um, because not all pussies are pink. Some people think activism is a good way to get men involved with crafts. If you believe in a campaign, you'll stitch it and you're not going to get hung up on you know, whether it's a man thing or a woman thing, it's actually like the theme that's important. It's rare to find an art form that has such a heavy gender bias as embroidery and needlecraft. You know, there are reasons why, but intrinsically people always think that particularly cross-stitch is what your granny does. But I do cross-stitch and I'm not your granny. Craftivism gave Betsy a way to express her opinions. I used to do uh, pieces based on anti-war graffiti. So when I made them, I could talk about the stitches and not talk about war, but I could eventually get to war by talking about the stitches. Craftivism encourages people to use creativity to improve the world, but at their own pace. A common criticism of the movement is that it can distract from the real issues facing women. However, the sight of pussy hats and lovingly stitched banners at marches can be powerful, sending a political message one stitch at a time.